Hi, I'm Melissa Muir. Today I'm going to show you the newly redesigned ring bending tool by Pepe Tools. The ring bending tool, like all Pepe Tools, is great as far as craftsmanship goes. It's a milled aluminum base that has been uh, coated in black, so it looks nice and sleek in your studio if nothing else, but even better, it does work well. One of the things that you need to have with this ring bending tool, it must be mounted in order for you to be able to use it. If it's not mounted, it will not work. So what I've done, because I'm not ready to commit a space to this on my studio bench at this point, I've actually mounted it to just this piece of wood. And what I will do now is take and I will clamp this wood. I just have some four inch clamps here and uh, bring this in and I'm going to clamp this onto my bench top and that will secure uh, the, the tool well enough for me to be able to work this. Once it's secured to your bench top you can attach your handle. The handle is really nice and long and this allows us to have really good range of motion as well as some leverage as you're working with some of the heavier metals. There's a hole here that you can insert this. There's also a groove where it will fit up against a screw that can be tightened with the Allen wrench that comes with our ring bender. So just come in and tighten that up and you should be ready to go. Next thing is it does come with a ring bending die and this just needs to be inserted into our uh, bottom plate here and then you'll see that there are three screws here that can secure this into place. So what I like to do is bring this in and I'm going to bring my my mandrel down just so that it's, it rests in here and that's going to help me align everything so that I know where it's going to be. It is adjustable so if you're working with thicker pieces of stock you're going to be able to change and move things around so that it works for your appropriate size of metal that you're working with. In this case I happen to know that this actually works very well since I've been testing it. So I'll just tighten this up and now we're ready to go. So as we're going to be making a spinner ring I start off with a wider stock and what I'm going to do is typically I will anneal my metal but I wanted to show you that you can still do this without annealing your metal. You just have to account for some of that spring back that is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I really want my ring to be the size of this third mantle or at least close to it, about a six and a half or so. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start on the two smaller dies and then again, like I said, we're going to have some of that spring back where the, the ring metal wants to open back up. So I'm going to just come in on this second die and form it around and each time I come in I'm just feeding it through just a little bit more and the smaller movements that you push into here the smoother your ring is actually going to be and you don't have to worry about having any little ruffles or ripples or jets or anything like that now some people have complained on the previous uh, ring bending tool that it would mar up their metal when they would first begin. And I don't know that you can really see this here, but I don't have any mars. It's perfectly smooth. I've not had a problem with anything marring. Okay, so at this point we've got this pretty rounded. It's forming well, but you can see that I've got this straight edge here. So I'm now going to move to my third mandrel, which is where I really want to be anyway. Feed my ring back onto this. And I'm going to form that last little section here bring that back in here around and just to show you push that back in there we're pretty close I still have quite a bit of a gap right here and a lot of that can actually be taken care of with my fingers in fitting this together but at this point, I am close enough with just a little bit of fidgeting that I can take that over and solder this. I also need to do something similar for the outer ring that's going to become our spinner. And this time I'm going to form on the largest of the mandrels. So same type of thing apply and I've got a pattern, a pretty decent pattern on this one. 
So I do want to be a little bit more careful. But again, same type of thing, just bring it in and little by little feed this through and it will form your ring for you. Again, I did not anneal this, so you can see here all of that spring back that's happening. You can see that it's not sitting right snug up against this mandrel. So again, we have this formed now. Pull this out here. And again, we're still open a little bit here. You can see that. So what I'm going to do, because this is really stiff, I'm working with 16 gauge stock on this one. So I'm actually just going to pull this in and I'm going to bring it down to the next size smaller. And just kind of tighten up this curvature here a little bit. And I'm going to open it up a little bit. Easier said than done. And I'm going to bring it back up here to the larger ring and again continue to form that. So I have this back up here on this larger ring mandrel or the round mandrel. I'm going to again just kind of continue to form this around, tighten everything up nice and neat. Pull this off. And again, I'm just going to tighten up this join here and get it soldered shut and we'll be ready to go to the next step. When I was getting this ready for soldering, I had to manipulate the ring just a little bit to get the seam proper. So what I'm going to do is just place this back into the third, or onto the third mandrel rather, uh, so that I can redefine or just kind of uh, finish up the rounding out of this ring because it got just a little bit out of round. Okay, and it doesn't take much at all because like I said it was already fairly round. And this is actually a pretty tight fit on this. So now I have my ring here and it is perfectly round. I'm going to flatten my side so I'm just going to take this over to some sandpaper kind of run it into a figure eight just to make sure that my sides are perfectly flat and we'll be ready to go to the next step. Now that we have everything soldered together, I've gone through and annealed my silver ring so that it will flare a little bit better. I'm going to just slip my copper ring on top of my silver ring. That's like I said, that becomes the spinner. And what we're going to do is flare this. And to do this, I like to use my dapping set. And I'll just take one of my daps that's, a, you know, obviously a little bit larger than my ring so that it flares it nicely. Give a couple of taps. Take a second to look at it, make sure that it flared okay. Flip it over so that you can do the other side. And again, a couple of taps, and I could feel that it moved more on one side than it did the other. But at this point, my copper ring is actually secure onto this. So I can flare this as much or as little as I want. However, I find that if you flare it too much, then it becomes uncomfortable. So I'm just going to give a few more taps on each side. Now I'm, I'm not hitting too lightly, but I'm definitely not hitting hard. And at this point, my ring slips on. It spins beautifully, it's comfortable. And I'm pretty good with that. The main thing that you want to do is just make sure that you flare it enough that your spinner part will not fall off. And there is our spinner ring. Now obviously this video was not a detailed tutorial, uh, but at least you get the idea of how to use your ring bender in a couple of different ways so that you can create things like this fairly quickly.